Winter approaches, the first snow's arrived, and with it the critics and deniers are out in force. Your range will drop to 50% and you'll freeze to death if you get stuck in a snowdrift. Well, the quick answer to that is a one-word answer, that's Norway. Enough said. They've got 98% market penetration, their winters are dramatically colder than ours. Parts of inland northern Norway remain frozen all year round. So how do they cope? Well, here are my top five winter tips to have a happy and warm winter in your EV. I'm Dave. Tip number five, prepare your EV for the winter. First and foremost, check your tyres. The legal limit of 1.6 millimetres simply not good enough, not for winter use. Recommendation is that while it is 1.6 millimetre at the legal limit, in the wet they should be replaced at three millimetres. That's nearly twice the depth of tread. In the winter, it gets wet, so if yours are already down below three millimetres, get them replaced. Do we need winter tyres? As a general rule, no. They're designed to give better grip in winter when the temperature drops below 7 degrees Celsius, so increasing traction and reducing stopping distances. But many parts of the country rarely get down to that thanks to the Gulf Stream, like Cornwall. That's got a much higher average of 9 degrees C. While others, like inland in the Scottish Highlands, will hit lows low more frequency. So the purists will say yes, but the ordinary motorists will look at the cost of a full set of winter tyres for maybe, what, two or five days use in any one winter, plus the fact that they wear out at a tremendous pace in the summer and decide that they're not necessary. Besides, they only ever drive on ploughed and gritted roads. They don't need the extra stopping distance, they got grit. Well, check your wiper blades. They'll be working overtime, so replace them if you get any streaks, squeaking, or areas that just don't clear. A clear windscreen is vital. And that goes for your screen wash. Make sure it's always full. Use one that is freeze protected and uses the correct concentration. Now also go and get your glass areas totally clean. We all put up with that thin film on the inside of the windscreen that's always there, but with the sun much lower in the sky, they need to be spotlessly clean. Get out your Mr Sheen window cleaner and give all the insides a good polish with a good clean microfiber cloth. Finally, get rid of any unwanted weight and put in essential equipment. Now, every extra pound of weight you lug around hurts your, hurts your range, so if you don't need it, take it out. But you might need survival equipment if you regularly travel over, say, the Pennines or into the Welsh or Scottish mountains. A thick blanket, absolutely essential, as would be a shovel or spade. Maybe an extra thick winter coat and a pair of Wellingtons. Plus, put in some drinking water just in case. No, you don't need to equip yourself like you're climbing Everest, but if you think you can't, it can't happen to you. Many motorists each year make the news, BBC News, stuck on top of the Pennines overnight. Who thought exactly that? Okay, tip number four, adapt your driving style. One of the biggest influences on range is your driving style. Rapid acceleration, frequent braking just burns through the miles. So calm it all down, take it easier, drive gently. Try to predict further ahead so you don't need to jam on your brakes at the last second. Yes, yeah, yeah, I know regen braking often gives you less options, but that will top up your battery so it's not lost energy. Well, look also at your top speed. Most of us cannot maintain a constant 70 mile an hour on the motorways anyway, so try 60 mile an hour. It'll probably get you there in about the same time, but it's much more relaxing and it extends your range. Tip number three, plan your routes. Well, it sounds silly, but plan your routes to avoid likely problem areas and avoid trouble. Make sure you've got plenty of options for charging as your range will be less and you don't want to arrive, aim to arrive with three miles range and find the services or the charges are closed. So stick to main roads for as long as possible. Keep your radio on, listen to weather warnings and road closures and realise that if a road is closed, it doesn't matter how good a driver you are or what tyres you have or chains, that road is closed. You also need to keep your battery at a higher state of charge, SOC, than normal. This particularly applies to longer trips. Never set off with a low state of charge unless it is to head directly to your nearest public charger. Likewise, you should never aim to arrive with 3% or 10 miles range left. If you stop, 
toilet break or coffee, top up. Now, it's probably going to be dearer than you normally pay, but top up. It's better to arrive with having spent an extra fiver than run out in the snow trying to reach your cheaper CPO. Just be more sensible than normal and realise you cannot beat the weather. You can only ever drive within the limits it sets for you. Tip number two, preheat your car before setting off. Now, if you can charge it home, just do so. If you can't, then heat your car while plugged into a public charger. Remember, that's your first stop. Getting a freezing cold EV up to a nice warm temperature uses a good chunk of your battery capacity. Heating it up while plugged into any charger always uses the charger power, not your battery. So heat up when plugged in, and when you set off, the battery will be at the maximum capacity you've set for it. Out on the road, your EV will be a nice toasty temperature, so if you face only a short trip, that stored heat, called thermal mass, will probably last the whole trip. So set your cabin temperature to a comfortable, rather than a toasty temperature, maybe 20 degrees Celsius. And that will quick, that will stop it cooling down just as quick. Well, for a longer journey again, you can set around 20 Celsius and use the seat and steering wheel heaters. They pour heat straight into your body with maximum efficiency, minimum loss. But over all that, be sensible. Don't strip your coat and jumper off and boost the cabin heat till you're overheating. Keep your coat and jumper on. It is winter and at some point you're going to have to get out. Be handy if you had a coat on. With human bodies, maximum heat loss is from the head, followed really by the hands. Everything else is covered. Wear a hat. Might look or feel silly, but it'll make a huge difference that you can actually feel. Likewise, gloves. If you've got a heated steering wheel, take them off once your hands are nice and toasty, and then put them on to retain the heat and turn the wheel heater down or off. The priority is you with the second priority being battery range. So in atrocious winter weather, look after yourself. If you need it, use the cabin heater as much as you need it. Now with the channel, I travel around the country reporting on the state of the UK public charging infrastructure, and it's dramatically different from when I started six years ago. Today, there are only a few motorway services that have zero EV chargers, even if it's only that legacy grid-serve electric highway, 60 kilowatt shared power. If you need the cabin heaters, use them, because on the main roads and motorways, it is never hard to find public EV chargers these days. Topping up at an extra unplanned charger stop is far better than suffering the cold or running out. Well, tip number one is precondition your battery. Now, this is a very contentious issue. Following that disaster report from Chicago last year, when dozens or was it hundreds of cars got stuck in minus 20 Celsius when they couldn't charge at a Tesla supercharger. Well, nobody seemed to report that these drivers got to the supercharger in their car in minus 20 Celsius temperatures. Their battery worked fine for that. Well, that battery was left out all night at minus 20 centigrade Celsius, and it worked, but maybe amazingly sluggishly, but it worked enough to get them to the charger. Now, this is where preheating your battery comes in. The Tesla BMS, this is a battery management system, has one task in life, namely to protect your battery and trying to slam in 250 kilowatts of power into an ice cold battery would destroy it. But all Teslas have battery heaters and coolers built into them. Many have a single, uh, single heat pump, which can do either or, to ensure that the battery stays and operates at the most efficient temperature. So plugging into a 250 kilowatt charger with a freezing cold battery will result in virtually no charging taking place because the BMS will stop it. Instead, as I said for cabin heaters, if plugged into a charger, it will simply use that power to warm up your battery. Those heaters or heat pumps would have been working flat out to bring the whole pack up to nice and toasty, but seeing as it weighs between half a ton and a ton, it's not instant. So the cars were plugged in, they probably weren't charging, they were preheating their batteries until the BMS said, okay, I'm warm enough, I'll allow much more power through. 
If there are, say, 12 charges there and all 12 were effectively blocked until warm enough to be able to charge, the queues would build up very quickly. So the key fact here is that while the batteries were barely charging, they were flat out preheating. And that says a simple fact. If your battery's too cold to charge, it will automatically preheat as soon as you plug in. You only ever have the choice between preheating on the journey to the charger or your EV preheating once you plug into the charger. The difference is one gives you a fast charging rate from the second you plug in, the other needs to wait for a while before it slowly ramps up the charging speed. Now, once charging at a decent rate, that current going in takes over from the heaters. And that itself, the current going in, very quickly warms your battery. That's why even on a freezing cold day, a Tesla can quite happily have its heat pump set to cooling to keep it from overheating while charging. And that can operate for many minutes after you set off. That's your BMS. One myth that's somewhat widespread is that an hour of motorway driving is enough to get your battery hot. No, it generally isn't. Certainly it's going to get warm, but against that you have a 70 mile an hour freezing cold gale hurtling under your EV. And where's the battery? Yeah, it's under your EV. So it's quite possible to lose more heat than you gain. Preconditioning would still be needed. So in the winter, always, always program your charger destination into your sat-nav, even if it's only a mile down the road and you use it several times a week. It simply tells the car that you're going to charge there and tells the BMS to have your battery at the right temperature at the ideal level on arrival for a faster charging session. If your sat-nav does not automatically turn on the preconditioning, you will need to do it manually, maybe 15, 20 minutes before you arrive. There are amazingly few EVs that do not have this feature. The result is you spend less time charging and just as importantly, you free up that charger for others to use. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe and YouTube will distribute this to a wider audience. And please consider joining the growing number that have become members of the channel through YouTube or Patreon. I'm Dave. <laughs>